Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you are doing well. We are going to be talking about the trucking industry, uh, primarily hotshot trucking, but also uh, the larger trucking industry as a whole. We're gonna, I'm going to give some warnings because of, well, I'll tell you in a second. But also, if you're not a trucker into trucking, you're going to want to listen to this because this is going to affect your food supply and the supply chain as a whole. Okay. So the first off, the reason why I'm making this video is because I have heard recently a few people in my life that I know of wanting to get into hotshot trucking, okay? So let me start with saying that back in 2007 to 2010, I had a truck and trailer set up as a hotshot trucker. And for those of you that do not know what hotshot trucking is, essentially it is a, a person that decides they want to get into trucking instead of going and getting a semi truck or going to work for a, you know, a big truck and trailer and they buy it themselves or going to work for a semi truck uh, operator, a shipping company, they go and they take either a three quarter ton or a one ton truck like a Ford uh, F-350 or a, a Duramax or, you know, a Dodge Ram, and then they go buy themselves a big trailer, right? And essentially those right now, I think industry standard for hot shots, boy, don't quote me on this, I'm not ready. I want to say it's like a 40 foot, 44 foot trailer. Um, and I had their gooseneck trailers and they come in either wedge trailers for like cars. You'll see them running down the road, the highways. You know, a guy with a, a diesel truck will just normal diesel truck will be carrying like three cars on a wedge trailer or their flat deck trailers carrying Connex boxes or anything they can pretty much uh, carry on those legally. And it's uh, one way of getting into the industry uh, without getting fully licensed and stuff. They have insurance. Um, but it's a different type of trucking. Well, I've seen a, an explosion in this industry in the last few years, especially, and there's a big, very serious issue coming. Okay, and I'm gonna talk about the systemic effects and how it's gonna affect you as the consumer. So let's see, let's grab the notes here. Uh, so a lot of people are asking these things, like, you know, uh, I, I see it on the internet, why trucking business is slow in 2022, or why trucking companies fail, or why trucking shortage. Um, and the reason why that is, is because there are a lot of people getting into the industry, right? There's also a lot of people walking away right now. There are tons of truckers walking away. If you are one of them, please put your comments below. Let us know what's going on in your life and in your career field because it's very important because if you have it in your house, a truck brought it to you. I don't care if it's food or junk from China, a truck brought it to you. At a certain point in the supply chain, a truck is involved. And as a matter of fact, it's really, it's really the most, uh, the biggest link in the chain, I believe, because there's so many of them and, and we're so in need of trucks, right? Uh, in a day and age where you see drones dropping stuff, they're never going to be able to drop everything. There's just not drones big enough, and they, and they just really probably will never will be. You, they will not replace ground transportation. So Hotshot blew up because of the everything shutting down, right? People were losing jobs or leaving jobs or fed up with their jobs, and a lot of people wanted to get a side hustle, and you guys know that I love side hustles. I talk about them all the time. Matter of fact, I'm even building a course about them because there's just so much darn information on how to make money out there, and I think this is a great time to make money. Problem with hotshot trucking is a lot of people got into massive amounts of debt. They went out and bought a really shiny truck, brand new wedge trailer, and this was during a time when trucks and trailers were exploding in price and inventory was very small and a lot of people got into debt. We also saw a lot of people get into debt in the trucking industry where they were buying brand new semi trucks that were compliant with certain laws and regulations. Also just buying new trucks because they were readily available and, and interest rates were so low, okay? I believe that is going to be the absolute demise of the uh, industry and it is gonna hurt us in our bottom dollar. Now let me explain. Right now, uh, back then interest rates were low, they're now moving up. Um, back then, fuel costs were low, they're moving up, right? Back then, there was a ton of shipping uh, jobs, uh, freight jobs out there, right? Because especially when people uh, closed down and went home, they jumped on Amazon and started buying things. So we saw a mad rush to the computers, the internet sites, and buying, hey, I've always wanted, I just got a stimulus check, and I've always wanted this piece of electronics. I've always wanted this big screen TV. I want to, to work on my house. So, so what happens is trucking just exploded, and the costs, uh, because there was actually a shortage of truck drivers right in the beginning because the government was nice enough, and I say that sarcastically, actually it pisses me off to no end, uh, took a lot of truck, good, hardworking men and women's licenses away because they, they suspended certain uh, endorsements, like hazmat endorsements, on their license because of things that they'd done in the past. So I'm going to be honest with you. You know, you can't expect anyone to change in their life if you take things away or completely always remind them of their past, right? 
and they, they said it was a threat and they took these uh, endorsements away, like hazmat endorsements. And these are people just trying to live, trying to survive. They weren't out there hurting anybody, right? They, yeah, made mistakes in the past and they were trying their hardest and then it was just stripped from them. I think that's absolutely horrible. You know, what's wrong is right, what's right is wrong kind of thing in this world. You know, you know, we, we let certain people off. Shoot, you can be in California and steal up to $900 and not even get prosecuted in some parts of the state, right? Sorry, it's, I digress, but, but back then, what people didn't realize, sorry, um, was that we are we were in a trucking, a truck, truck driver shortage, okay? So that only exacerbated the problem. So it sent uh, freight rates skyrocketing. Guys, if you're in the industry and you know what I'm talking about, if I'm right, let me know in the comment section. If I'm wrong, let me know so that people can read through the comment section and learn more from you than they're learning from me, okay? So it sent freight rates just skyrocketing. So that was the golden opportunity for so many people. I even saw YouTube channels just explode with um, uh, hotshot trucking all over them. The problem is now, back then, high freight rates, low gas prices, low interest rates, and readily available in the beginning, trucks and trailers. Everybody went out and uh, leveraged themselves. Guys, this is, uh, I want to remind you about the 2008 housing bubble. This is the exact same scenario. It's the same exact sales scenario and bubble and pop scenario of anything out there in economics, okay? It's these uh, fundamentals of uh, human emotion that cause these bubbles to be built up and burst, all right? So uh, you are going to about to see hotshot trucking get completely decimated because uh, these guys cannot afford to pay the high, not only, there's another thing too, interest rates are, I'm sorry, insurance rates are rising for these guys. Because um, if you think about it, an insurance uh, company that was underwriting a truck that was $60,000 is now $100,000. That trailer was a certain price, now it's double or triple that price. So insurance rates are also going up and um, insurance costs are actually going up for a myriad of reasons, but that's just one, right? So these hotshot truckers are gonna be decimated. They're gonna be left out in the wind. It just, it's horrible, right? But there's a lot of people that should not, and, and I teach this to, when I consult with business owners when they have either a side hustle or a full-on business, is to, to stay out of debt, to really work within your means and build up your cash position, and then come over the top of your competitors. And I teach that all the time. Well, a lot of people are about to go out of business. Another thing that's gonna hit hotshot trucking is the uh, ability for a semi-truck operator, if they don't have loads, and they go take a really good paying load one direction, you know, let's say five or six hours, and they're able to uh, load up on, let's say what a hotshot would normally take, like three cars coming back that direction, they're gonna take it because they're needing the money as well. As a matter of fact, they're gonna be able to come in and go, three cars, shoot, put five on there. I mean, I could fit them. Uh, just on a flatbed, um, you'll start seeing load modifications like you wouldn't believe because they're like, hey, you know, anything's better than nothing, right? I'm going to be going back empty. I'd rather be going back full and uh, make the most of my trip, right? So you're going to have that issue. Now, here's where it really affects the consumer. And I want people to understand this is very, very serious. Every day a truck driver quits. It takes that much longer to hire someone new in their place, all right? It takes training. Uh, and logistics to get that truck driver on the road. What seems to happen in every economic bubble and burst is it always seems to happen all at once, all right? And this is, you're going to see that this summer. You're gonna see a lot of hotshot truckers have to stop working. You're gonna see a lot of truckers stop working out of frustration um, because they can't make any money at today's rates. I'm hearing stories of brokers that are offering loads that you're like, I can't, even, I can't even turn a wheel for that price. This exact same scenario happened in 2008. And I did that video where someone said it didn't happen, you're stretching the truth. And I just literally showed them all of the exact news articles from all over the country in 2008, how certain truckers were having to, to just throw in the towel. You know, we've seen comments before that I've talked about where truckers had to give it up in a uh, in the year 2000, 2001, when propane costs exploded or other fuel costs arose uh, and they didn't expect it and they weren't ready, they were too leveraged, right? Well, so that means if there's less truck drivers, the cost of trucking will explode again, right? And there's a lot of truck drivers, yeah, let's bring that back. Trust me, you don't like that scenario. We like even keel prices because you can plan for those, right? Um, because it puts the squeeze on everybody. 
But then that means if pr trucking prices go up or there's a lack of drivers to even get the food there, it means the food at your grocery store will go up in price and or not even show up. And I want people, excuse me, to understand how vitally important that is. All right, guys, I hope you got something out of this because I want people to be prepared and not scared. I also want business owners and side hustlers to have maximum success because this is the time to take our country back. During these times that we're going into bad times, take business back. Let's stop giving our business to other countries and let's hold it here. And that's what's great for this nation and other nations because once we become self-reliant, it's gonna be better for everybody else. All right, guys, with that being said, I thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all the people who hit the thumbs up button and all the new subscribers and I love all of my subscribers. You're the best on the internet. Have a great day. God bless. The Economic Ninja is out.